Hey everyone, welcome to my next video. This is Dale Martin. Today we're going to talk about how you can take beautiful applications and bring them to your devices without the need for any coding experience whatsoever. All you really know, need to know how to do is build the basic spreadsheet and how to use the Glide web app. So let's take a look and get started. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell to get future notifications on future videos. All right, here we go. The first thing you're going to do is go to go.glideapps.com. And if you've never been there before, you'll have to come down here and sign in and register. If you have been here before, you will see your login information down here in the lower left hand corner. Glide has some excellent information here on how to get started as well as some really good examples and templates that you can use to see how this information is portrayed in an app as opposed to what it looks like in your Google Sheets. So once you've signed in and gotten your account established you're going to have to give it permission to read uh, Google Sheets out of your Google Drive. Then you'll just want to come over here and click on New App. That pops up the window for you to select a file from your Google Drive for your recent Google Sheets. All you have to do is find the sheet that you want to turn into an app and you are ready to go. I've already done that with something called the Glide Vocabulary Map. Let's take a look at that. Once you pick a Google Sheet, Glide tries to automatically associate the data in that sheet with the application properties that you see here. So on this side I have my menus, on this side we have our interactive working copy, and over here on this side we actually have a list of properties and components that we can manipulate and we'll see the changes show up over here. For example, real quick, uh, this is called the list layout. If I don't like the list layout, I could come down here and change it to columns or possibly even tiles. So that's just kind of give you an idea of how that works. We're going to be using this feature a lot. The first thing you'll want to notice is down here you will see where Glide has tried to associate the title with the word, the details with the definition, the image with the picture. It usually does a really good job of getting these right the first time when it imports. However, if you need to go in and edit this, you can click here, go down to details, and that brings up every single um, heading that is in your spreadsheet. Click over to the spreadsheet here to show you. So you see my headings, word, definition, synonym, antonym, and picture are the same as word, synonym, antonym, and picture. If they're associated with the wrong thing, I can click on the box and I can change that if I need to. All of these are perfectly correct, so we don't need to edit any of this. But if you did, that's where you would do that. So we're going to go back to list. We're going to go ahead and add a search box. If you'll notice when I click this, you'll see something happen here. We click search box. And now the way that works is when this goes live, you'll be able to click in this box and you can type in a word and you see we come over here and we get income. Nice little feature. In addition to the search feature, you could click add item which brings this little plus button up here on the interactive display. What this would allow the student to do would be to actually add things from the phone or from the tablet and they would appear on the spreadsheet. So let's click on that and see how it looks. 
So if you had another word that you wanted to add, you, the student could type in the word, type in the definition, synonym, antonym, possibly upload a picture, and then that would show up over on the spreadsheet. So information can flow two ways, from the spreadsheet to the app, as well as from the app to the spreadsheet. So this is a great way to crowdsource, if you will. Think about if every one of your students had this feature on their phone, you could create some really interactive uh, vocabulary worksheets very quickly. So another thing you might could do for study purposes is reverse the order of the list. And then that just puts the words on the bottom to the top and forces students to become familiar with that information. So I'm going to change this layout a little bit. I really like the columns here. Um, still has the title, still has the details, and the image is here. I can still search if I want to. There's only one sheet in my spreadsheet. I can still add if I need to. Uh, I'm going to make this my own by clicking on settings. You'll see our workspace over here changes a little bit. And now what we can do is we could change the color of this. I could change the image if I wanted to by clicking here. My computer is glitching a little bit today. So this is actually to upload an image. To change the image, we would click here. And we have all kinds of choices. And it just really goes on and on and on. So you can pick from any of these symbols or icons uh, that you're interested in. As well as add your own if you want to later on. I'm going to stay with this little uh, composition notebook. And... Maybe we'll take a look at the theme here. We can, or I think we're already on light, but let's see. Uh, light just takes care of the top heading. We can go to dark, which is black. We can do bold, which is I think where we were before. Pure black or pure white. I think I like the bold. Maybe we'll change this color one more time. Yeah, it's just not doing it for me. Let's try. Let's try something over here in this area. Yeah, that looks good. Just like that. All right, I like that. You can give it its own URL. This is very uh, important when you go to share it. And you can also write a description here. The other thing that you can do down here at the bottom when you're finished is you can decide if you want to make this app public for everybody. Do you just want your students to have access either via email or password or make them sign in? Or you can also put in an email whitelist so that only folks who have the same email address that you have put into the app can get into your application. I'm okay with going ahead and making this public. You may not want to do that uh, because you certainly wouldn't want people adding inappropriate content to your vocabulary for your class. Uh, but I'm going to leave this one public. Scooch this back up a little bit. So we only have one page in our spreadsheet, but if we had more than one, uh, we could navigate back and forth by changing this button down at the bottom. And that would allow us to go from one page to another in our spreadsheet. But all of our information is here on one page, so that's not necessary. The other thing you can do is toggle back and forth between the iOS version and the Android version. You can also, if you need to edit the sheet, you can click on Edit Sheet. 
make any changes that you need to make. And then you can reload the sheet. And you'll see those changes. For example, we could edit sheet and we could change so we could change NA to none and then go back into our app Reload sheet. Oh, it took one, but not the other. Let's try to reload again. Let's go back and take a look at that. Uh, I think we need to get out of that cell. And now reload sheet. There we go. And the data will flow that way. So the data not only flows from the spreadsheet to the application, but remember, because we allowed students to add, pretty sure that was under settings, because we allowed students to add, now the data also flows from the application to the spreadsheet. So I hope you found this useful. It's a really excellent way to create some uh, tablet and phone applications, either in iOS or in Android, um, just using Google Sheets. So you could use this as a study guide for your students to work on and, and crowdsource and collaborate on uh, and build together, or um, you could also use this as a culmination activity for um, your spreadsheet unit. We did something very similar to that in Splendora, and we actually had all of our fifth graders work together to build a uh, inner office telephone application for the entire district. So our students had to email teachers and staff members, ask them if they wanted um, their uh, phone number, uh, school phone number on the um, phone list? Uh, did they want that electronically? Did they want an image included with that? So we had students emailing teachers in a real world situation. Um, and then the students worked together by department and uh, uploaded, typed in all that information or uploaded it, depending on how they received it, uh, into a spreadsheet and then um, configured the application. So uh, it was a very nice culminating project um, for our fifth graders last year on how to use uh, spreadsheets in a, in a real world setting in an authentic way. So please don't forget to reach out if you need any help or have any questions. You can always email me at dmartin at splendorisd.org or you can follow me on Twitter. And like we said before, please don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.